For the peritonsillar abscess, what we're going to need to do is take a zip tie and some large diameter bubble tape in order to set up the growth structure. What we're going to do in this particular scenario, we have a Lairdall airway task trainer. So we've already measured it out. And for us, you take one bubble and measure three down the same and then one uh, across or distal. That provides the proper distance or circumference for the inside of the task trainer. So, once we have identified the air pockets that we're going to maintain, we need to cut a strip in the center to keep them equidistant, and we need to separate it out from all the other material. Again, it will be this pocket and this pocket. So. Remember, it's this pocket and this pocket. Again, still this pocket and this pocket. So, just for simplicity. For the peritonsillar abscess, what we're going to need to do is take a zip tie and some large diameter bubble tape in order to set up the growth structure. What we're going to do in this particular scenario, we have a Lairdall airway task trainer. So we've already measured it out. And for us, you take one bubble and measure three down the same and then one uh, across or distal. That provides the proper distance or circumference for the inside of the task trainer. So, once we have identified the air pockets that we're going to maintain, we need to cut a strip in the center to keep them equidistant, and we need to separate it out from all the other material. Again, it will be this pocket and this pocket. So. Remember, it's this pocket and this pocket. Again, still this pocket and this pocket. So, just for simplicity. I've placed my fingers on the two air pockets that we needed to maintain the integrity of. If you notice that the air pockets in between are all, all punctured, but in effect we actually have two layers of plastic. So what we're going to need to do is literally cut off the curved layer that actually entails the bubble. So as to make the flat area. Again, maintain the integrity of your two pockets that will eventually become the abscesses. The closer you cut down to the flat surface, the less trouble you will have later on in having the plastic lay flat when you coat it with liquid latex.
So now that I've trimmed off the second layer of the bubble, looking this way, you notice it's more flat, right? So that is going to make for a beautiful flat layer when we dip it in latex. Now we still have our two bubbles uh, intact, which is what we need. If we look on the zip tie now, we see that it actually darn near fills up the entire length of the zip tie. So what we're going to need to do next is cut slits in it, distal to the two bubbles, as well as proximal to the two bubbles, uh, such that it will go from the top, the zip tie will go underneath the bubble, over, back, on top of the uh, plastic, come over, then back down under the other bubble, and then pop back out over here such as that it'll hold it up against the um, oral fairings of the airway task trainer. For tight control of where you're going to make your cuts, I actually use a needle and stretch it out a little bit. That way I know exactly where the holes are going to be. Course, be careful. Thank did you, you just do that? I just did that. Thankfully this is a sterile new needle. And now we have our punctures. Not only in the bubble, but in my skin. From the punctures that we just made, we thread it through. Nice and snug. There we go. Now it's threaded all the way through and lays nice and flat. For the next phase, we need to make a cream of mushroom or a cream of chicken base, which we will use as our pus for injection. Now that we have decided on cream of mushroom, take as much of the concentrated soup as you can without the bits of either chicken or mushroom and just stir it into a small amount of regular water. Warm will actually help it break up sooner but any kind of water will work and just stir until you have a consistency that you want your learners to evacuate out of the pus pockets or abscesses. So for the next stage, filling the abscess, you want to take a 20 cc syringe with a needle, smaller the better. The reason you want to do 20 is because you only want to uh, puncture the air bladder once. When you puncture it more times, you're going to ruin the integrity of it. Next, you're going to evacuate your cream of whatever you want soup. In this case, it's cream of mushroom. 
and you want to slowly evacuate. The reason for being slow is that you don't want to pick up any chunks larger than the size of the syringe and you want to be able to push it out if you in fact do pick up some. It will take a small amount of force in order to be able to do this. So just be patient and consistent in the amount of force that you apply in evacuating it out. In theory, that should be enough for one. Find the apex of your air bubble, bevel up, and puncture the air bladder. You're going to push some of your cream of veggie soup in, and you're going to evacuate some air out, and continue this process with the needle inserted into the air bubble, slowly filling it up. The reason why you puncture at the apex is that you don't want any of the liquid to interfere with the creation of the seal when you put the super glue on. When you make the super glue wet, it will actually react and end up making a large scar-like tissue on top, much larger than the intended just sealing of the bubble wrap. So I've just pulled the needle out and keeping mindful of where we poked the air bladder, we're going to open up the super glue, in this case Gorilla Glue, and we're just going to dab it on. And now we let it dry. You want to make sure that the super glue is completely dry and that can take up to an hour. Now, some notes. If you only want to have a regular abscess and you don't want to make this peritonsillar, uh, you don't need the zip tie. In fact, you only need one. And then you place a small amount of adhesive of whatever you decide on the bottom of it uh, and attach it to whatever part of the task trainer you want. Also, if you want to make a loculated uh, abscess, you can take the smaller bubble wrap and do the exact same procedure and then just roll it up or crinkle it up together such that the bottom side of it represents the, the new top side of the loculated abscess. So for the, while we're waiting for the super glue to dry on our peritonsillar abscess model, let me show you what I meant by loculated. Uh, generally, I would recommend using small bubble wrap, the small diameter bubbles, but for video, I'm going to do large bubble. Uh, you pick three, for example, that you want. Go ahead and cut them out, roughly. You don't need to be super clean with this one because, like I said, it's the so I picked three, almost either straight or in a crooked bent pattern. And the reason why is when you fold them together and you turn them around, you now have a flat surface for which will be loculated. Does that make sense? So now you're going to fill from this side with your uh, cream of chicken or cream of mushroom. The exact same way you were doing for the peritonsillar abscess, where you needed to put uh, super glue where you punctured, you're going to, need to do the exact same thing, but now you're going to use the flat side of the bubble to go and create a loculated surface. And then you continue on once it's dry, 
with the liquid latex that matches your task trainer. Uh, now for the actual application of the liquid latex. Uh, for smaller, more uh, intricately shaped objects, it's actually more beneficial to use a narrow uh, width foam brush, but in this case we have one that's already having latex on it for another project, so we'll use this. Do not dip your abscess into the liquid latex. It seems tempting, but there will be so much, uh, so much residual on it that it will actually hinder the uh, drying of the liquid latex through skinning. Uh, so you just start at the top and then you work your way down. By doing so, gravity is doing some of the work for you and covering the sides. Don't apply a lot of pressure because after all, you have only made a tenuous seal with the bubble wrap and the super glue. In this case, I prefer Gorilla Glue because it does have an elastomer inside the super glue, the cyanoacrylic. And so when you are manipulating your abscess, it flexes to maintain the seal instead of the rigid structure that regular super glue forms. Super glue also comes in the form of crazy glue, which is quite useful as well if you don't have the Gorilla Glue. It's, again, I guess, a matter of preference. So we've covered the top layer. Again, this is just thin coating it. This is not the final coat that they're going to see, nor the final color. Once you have the abscess pockets filled, now we move on to the plastic and the zip tie between the two. If you can, try to make it as flat as possible, and the liquid latex will actually help you in this regard in making it flat. Uh, just keep applying and applying, dabbing it over and over and over, and you will build up to the sufficient amount that it will start to lay flat. Again, don't just pour it on because it will literally uh, stay wet for eternity or until you disturb it again to dry it. Okay. So, like everything, we've now applied the liquid latex and now we're going to have to wait for it to dry through the ammonia evaporating off. So, we'll come back in about an hour. Thank you. Good. Okay, now our abscess is dry to the touch and not actually rigid, it's still flexible. But it's too light of a color. Flesh actually is not the exact same color as the Lairdall Airway Trainer. <clears throat> of course, trainers vary by uh, color according to the manufacturer. So, because you're not going to want this to actually stick out in an angry, gnarled fashion of a lesion elsewhere on the body, you want this to actually blend in with the tone and color of the plastic used in the oropharynx of the uh, Airway Task Trainer. So. What we're going to use in this case is uh, acrylic paint, peach. I dropped in a few colors, a few drops of red dye, uh, red food coloring. Uh, the reason I did that is to blend it closer to uh, the natural skin tone of the oropharynx. So, now that that's working, notice I'm just going to start dabbing this on just like how we put the latex on to begin with 
for the uh, abscess. You notice it has a more of a pinkish hue to it, and so that's actually going to match our model better. We just go along the way and try to make it fit in. We're going uniform again. I'm working on the sides you're not seeing, but my goal is first to go and give the base coat of the latex flesh color and then to come back and work in a more color appropriate paint. So that is it for now. Okay, and now for our final product. Easiest to start off pulling from the zip tie as it's the most firm structure. Don't squeeze the, the bubble, obviously. Okay, we have the back side and the front side. And when you place it in, you'll want to turn it upside down and in. And so if you were looking uh, at the patient's feet direction, that task trainer, you'd be looking down the oral pharynx. You would place it either in like this direction or you'd place it in this direction of the oral pharynx behind the uvula. So now that we have our model finished, you can flex the zip tie and then fit it into the oropharynx of the airway task trainer. And that's it.